The Video Game Awards 2019 happened last night, and here to discuss it with me is Mr. Henry PGG, host of the year, Cooper. <laughs> Well, I only had to beat one person to that award. Well, congratulations, you've earned it. I'd like to thank my mother and uh, the director. <laughs> so uh, in this video, we're going to be going through all the winners later on in the video. However, there was loads of announcements this mm. year, and it, it, kind, it kind of surpassed itself. It surpassed its previous years, that's for sure. And there was a lot of things announced, a lot of trailers. So first up, the official announcement and unveiling of the Xbox next-gen console, which is named the Xbox Series X. It's the Xbox Series X, everybody. What a freaking terrible name that, that is. That name just slips off the tongue like, and Xbox out of the one mind. sucked. <laughs> and now there's there's this one. Xbox Scarlet was so much cooler. Well, one thing I noticed on Twitter, someone said, when all the grandmas are out there trying to buy Christmas presents for little Timmy, Grandma, Grandma, I want the X, the new Xbox for Christmas. Okay, what's it called? The Xbox Series X. And they'll go into the shop and like, can I have the, the Xbox... Uh, oh, that one says One X. That's got to be it. The yeah. Xbox One X, please. I'd like that. I Whereas mean, PS5... <sighs> It's, it's just easy. Yeah, I mean, they haven't got it right since the 360. 360 was the best name. Yeah. And then everything else since has been shit. Shitter and shitter and shitter. Now this is shitter. Anyway, name aside, we got a look at the console itself in this trailer. And it's it's a, like a vertical PC-shaped thing. And yeah. it looks weird, right? Very it, unusual. It's a very cuboidal sort of tall box. So it's going to be an empty glass box to begin mm. with. Then, and then it, uh, and it filled in with the, the branding and the color and everything. Um, uh, Funnily enough, though, it when it vertically stood, the footprint is only about as much as a controller. So if you can see the controller side by side, it's really quite small. It's not like wide like a big PC. Which does seem kind of odd because part of the visual appeal of a, a console is that you can stick it under your TV like you've got your normal set-top boxes. That thing's not going to fit under a TV. It's going to have to go beside it or sideways. It can go sideways. They've confirmed that. And the name itself, Project... Oh, what was it again? Series X. Sorry, I'm <laughs> fucking confused already. Series X. X um, implies that there will be other several models, which was kind of the rumor that there's yeah. a more entry level version. So Series X is the it's the big X, and it's going to be Series what, Y. Y for like the, <laughs> why do why, you buy this why, one? Why, yeah, why does this exist? <laughs> no, like hardware confirmed as yet, other than it will feature an NVMe SSD and top of the line GDDR6 memory. And I guess the closing thoughts on this is like, why did they announce? Out of the game was it's a bit of a middle finger to E3, right? Yeah, kind but out of. of the blue as well, like nobody leaked it or anything. It gives the game awards a bit more uh, validation, I guess, in terms of being an important gaming event, which I'm I'm happy with. I like the game awards. I think a major reason for it is that they're just beating Sony. Sony have confirmed that it is going to be called the PS5, but we haven't seen it or anything like it. We know that the, it's going to release around the same time, and that's pretty much on point with all the predictions anyway. But now Xbox are have officially started the next generation, yeah. and they've beaten. Sony to the door. Maybe it's Jeff Keighley, the organizer of the Game Wars. Maybe he's all this his contact box must be so big now. You know, he's best mates with Hideo Kojima and that. Yeah. And he, he's must made a lot of friends throughout the industry. And he's just pulled managed to pull this string in order to get this announcement out yeah. as it was. So. He's a very popular guy in the in the gaming world, that is for sure. But the next announcement was kind of tied in with the Xbox Series X announcement, and is one of my favorite things. It's Hellblade 2. Yeah. Hellblade Senua's <laughs> Saga. <laughs> yeah. What the wolf? So the trailer was allegedly running in engine as a demo, which showcased some really, really impressive graphics. I mean, the game already looked really good from yeah. Ninja Theory back when that came out a few years ago, especially for a small scale sort of indie project. Oh, it was absolutely amazing. It looked fantastic. And the fact that that's running in real time and yeah. it's not pre-rendered, I think that is phenomenal from what it looks like. Uh, I'm really interested to see where they go because her story wrapped up quite succinctly. She, you know, achieved her aim. She conquered her personal demons and all that. So I wonder what they're going to throw up against her next because she's still got a lot of issues because that game really focuses on her uh, mental health problems and she's still got a lot of those so I'm looking forward to see where they go next yeah I hope that she learns a few more sword swinging moves yeah That's instead of that because three the... hit combo <laughs> yeah that would be cool but one thing's for sure it looks absolutely amazing Ninja Theory are now owned by Microsoft so maybe this will be oh, it kind of implies that it is definitely going to be an Xbox exclusive console exclusive obviously yeah. it probably comes to PC like last or time or at least too. a timed exclusive 
exclusive because the original did eventually come to uh, PlayStation, but I'm pretty sure it didn't launch at the same time. I might be, yeah. I might be making that up. But while Microsoft has Hellblade 2, Sony has Ghost of Tsushima, and we Ghost got the proper trailer this time, unlike the the trailer trailer that we got trailer, at State of Play, and it finally gave us a release window. Unfortunately, not a proper date, but it has said that it's coming in summer 2020, and we both immediately said it's probably going to get delayed. Yeah. Well, it, they'd be foolish to delay it because it would be coming out the same time as the PS5 if they did delay yeah. it. So it's probably September is probably the latest, and that's probably why they've, they've thrown it out there as a um, as a window for it. So summer 2020 is not very specific, but with the PlayStation 5 arriving in yeah. the holiday season, uh, you would think that they, it has to be out the door yeah, by definitely by that got time. a deadline. I think summer 2020 just gives them a bit of wiggle room. Hell, they could even bring it out a little earlier. Could be uh, closer to the beginning of summer or close to the end of summer. So it gives them a bit of breathing room. Ghost of Tsushima is now one of the most anticipated games coming for the PlayStation now. And uh, for those of you who don't know, this story revolves around the first Mongol invasion in, set in Japan in the 13th century, developed by Sucker Punch from the infamous series. And uh, funnily enough, Second Son, or infamous Second Son, was released during the early life of the PlayStation 4. And Ghost of Tsushima will be like one of the death like kind of yeah. games of kind of they, they, they so. were there at the beginning and they're there at, they're the, end. at the end but this is meant to be a cross-platform thing as we mentioned in our video earlier this week it's meant to be coming to ps5 as well according to rumor and i love that you've just got written here the leaves the leaves the leaves yeah i mean every single trailer so far it's just the le- about the leaves and yeah. this whole game is about yeah. the leaves it's, it's all <laughs> blossom and shit flowing mm. in the wind while someone stands there dramatically then <laughs> suddenly they twitch their sword and there's a, like a, a shing of a, an instrument so the i mean the trailer itself was kind of underwhelming for me there wasn't a lot of gameplay there. If there was gameplay, it was shown in very short sequence of like yeah. two seconds or so in some little montage of when he jumps off a roof and just starts stabbing people. Other than that, it's just cinematics, which is, I don't know, we've seen gameplay in the past, but you know, I don't know, it's very underwhelming when you're, you want to get your teeth into what the game's going to be like. Is it yeah. going to be fun or, or what? You know, you're going to see how it's going to play, but all they've got to show you is the leaves, you know what I mean? Especially when they've kind of, they've released a trailer for a trailer. It's like, right, get excited for this trailer. Oh, wait, but there's another trailer and we're, we're not going to really show you that much. It mainly seems to me that they're they're just reminding people that this game exists because it has been radio silent for a little while. I didn't mind the trailer. It looked pretty, but it is very cinematic and I would have liked a bit more proper gameplay, like captured live gameplay from yeah. someone actually playing it, not like dramatic camera angles. It just reminded us that this world is beautiful. That yeah, mon- montage that at true. the end with all those cutting through all those environments. Uh, the color palette, like you said earlier, is amazing yeah. in this game and just those environments. I just want to be in that environment and um, what form that will take and what will be my my gameplay in that environment is yet to be seen so um, we'll just have to wait and see from what looks like it's sort of gameplay from different angles seems to show off some new weapons like smoke bombs and bows and arrows but yeah we don't have anything really specific other than what we got a couple years ago at E3 which was an extended gameplay trailer and even that was very like dramatic and cinematic but I'm still here for this game still excited and it's def- definitely the biggest thing apart from maybe the last of us yeah. for PlayStation oh, at the absolutely as uh, so the next up we've got on our list as things start to get slightly less interesting is is a, a trailer for Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3's upcoming DLC for the X-Men called Rise of the Phoenix, and it's the second paid DLC pack, which is going to bring a bunch of new characters, including Phoenix, Iceman, Gambit, and Cable. Why is Beast not there? It's beyond me. He's already in the game as an NPC. You've got him ready to go. Just copy and paste Black Panther's moves onto him, and you're done. But that, that's all I've got to say about that. Anyway, one that I thought was quite interesting, and even more so when I found out more about it, is an update for Control, which is called the Expeditions, and we've got a little trailer for that, which is a free update to Control. It's just going to add a bunch of challenges which is awesome. I'm always nice. up for challenges, especially in a game like Control with such great gameplay and using the uh, telekinetic powers. Just more excuses to use them and play around with them. I'm up for that. And also free updates in games without microtransactions. Yeah. Would you believe it? It's actually possible. Don't let the other money-grabbing bastards tell you any different. It's possible. It's doable. People do it. I'm here to tell you that it is possible. Godfall was the next uh, trailer to be shown. And this is the first game that's been a officially announced for the PlayStation 5. It comes to PlayStation 5 and the PC, which it says in the trailer, then right at the very end of the trailer, they drop a, an, an epic uh, logo in there. So they don't actually say it's an epic exclusive in the trailer. However, the Twitter account did confirm that Godfall is slated to be exclusive to Epic Game Store on PC for 12 months. Unlucky everybody who just likes Steam. So it's going to be published by 
Gearbox, developed by Counterplay Games, which is a relatively unknown uh, new developer based in California. They worked on various other games in the past, God of War, Destiny 2. Well, these are the developers themselves, not the studio, obviously. They've only done one game in the past, and that was a game collectible card game called Duelist. So that's their only only yeah, back catalogue of game to go on. Apparently this game's a loot slasher, Borderlands with Swords, essentially, and um, it's made in Unreal Engine 4, so that's it. Then there was another trailer for the Final Fantasy 7 remake and the game releases on March 3rd so it's really not that long away but I don't really think this trailer was necessary it was a lot more of the same and if you're already invested in this remake you've, you've already seen everything they've shown pretty much I mean it, it's there again it's reminding people that it's a game that's coming out uh, the next one that kind of caught our eye is Ruined King a League of Legends story which got itself a little trailer which is the first single player League of Legends game and it's developed by Airship Syndicate really? they're the developer who are also behind Darksiders Genesis which was kind of a switch up for the for the franchise at that point. Riot Games, who make uh, League of Legends, recently announced the Riot Forge publishing program, which aims to release single-player games within the League of Legends universe, which seems pretty cool. The trailer is crap. There's no gameplay, no in indication of what type of game this actually is, especially if it's breaking form with the traditional League of Legends setup of being multiplayer. Ruined King is a turn-based RPG set after the Burning Tides, according to PC Gamer. You can play as all sorts of League of Legends champions as we explore Bilgwater and the Shadow Isles. According to Airship Syndicate, CEO Joe Madwera, I believe I've pronounced Madurera? that. Madurera? Mad, 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 Madurera. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. They've cooked up a new take on turn-based combat. So we'll have to wait and see what whatever that means. So the next thing that got a lot of attention, especially on Reddit, was The Wolf Among Us 2 uh, was announced. Now, this is a game which rose from the ashes of a dead game studio. If, for those of you who are out of the loop, Telltale Games are the owners of this IP. They folded in 2018, but a holding company picked up uh, the assets early this year. A company called LGC Entertainment are now doing business under the name Telltale Games. So Telltale tale reborn essentially <laughs> the wolf among us 2 is the first game announced from the studio and the game will not release in 2020 and will be an epic game store exclusive for pc only and it will also be on consoles interestingly enough the original wolf among us will be free on epic games store this week starting like yesterday i think so if those of you who want to get a free game but you do have to uh, install the epic <laughs> games launcher to do that um it's it's there and it's well worth playing it's one of the best oh, yeah. telltale games games that's for sure i love it when they do this hit we've got a sequel so here's the original for free it's great promotion and then the final one we've got to talk about here because obviously there were plenty of other trailers that we don't have time to talk about is fast and furious crossroads which is coming out in may 2020 and you know when you watch those trailers and you think my god this screams cash in this this is exactly that yeah, it looks, looks kind of like ugly especially for a game coming out this late in the uh, console life sp lifespan uh very surprised how bad the facial capture and facial textures are especially when they're using the real likenesses of characters in the movies like Vin Diesel and uh, Michelle Rodriguez. It looks absolutely trash and you compare it to the Hellblade trailer from yeah. earlier. The face cap on that is absolutely amazing. It's it's just one of the best, right? However, this is just dog shit compared to it. It really is. And for a huge IP like yeah. Fast and Furious, it's so surprising. They should have loads more money to throw into this game. But no, it looks like shit and it probably plays like shit. I read somewhere it's not even like a racing game. It's, like, it's a vehicle heist game, which is really bizarre. Of course it is. Anyway, it might be good. That's enough of what we've got in terms of announcements. Again, there were a bunch of others that we didn't have time to talk about, but now we're going to move on to the winners of various awards. So again, we probably won't deal with all of them because there's multiple awards, but let's hit the big one right off the bat. Game of the Year, which doesn't surprise me and probably won't surprise a lot of you, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice won Game of the Year. Not a big surprise to me. Lots of people liked it. It's not really our sort of game though. We're not really into the Soulsborne worlds. It's one of those games that does what it does really, yeah. really well, and, and and it's uh, as a consensus that people who played it and loved it actually agree that it, yeah, it is one of the best in the genre. Yeah. Best game direction, Death Stranding, makes sense because that game is almost a movie in itself. Best narrative went to indie game Disco Elysium, so I'm sure they're very, very happy with that. Oh yeah, that, that's one of the games that's definitely on my list. That's something that I spotted at EGX a couple of years ago and I played the demo and I was blown away by it. And um, I said right then, it, it was my game of the um, show actually. And um, it comes out and it wins 
wins th- not only this award but another award in the best role playing game of this year too so credit to Disco Elysium and the developers they've put something together that's really special here and uh, it's definitely stood out from the crowd this year uh, another big one is best action game to Devil May Cry 5 and I would have rioted if it hasn't won best fighting game went to Super Smash Bros Ultimate so all of you Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat lovers can have to accept that it is a fighting game now best multiplayer to Apex Legends and that was up some up against some stiff competition best performance went to Mads Mikkelsen's Cliff in Death Stranding which uh, I'm not entirely convinced by best art direction went to Control which I think is very valid best score and music went to Death Stranding and even though I think it's a snub that Days Gone and Plague Tale weren't nominated disgusting best ongoing game surprising no one went to Fortnite best AR slash VR game was Beat Saber again that's the obvious winner there's no way anyone was going to beat that and then there's a bunch of esports ones which I'm nobody's not interested in talk about to be honest <laughs> okay the winners of this game awards ceremony obviously was Disco Elysium I hadn't realised that they won the other two awards for fresh indie developer and independent games so there's four awards yep. for Disco Elysium that's phenomenal and Death Stranding was nominated for like nine <laughs> yeah and they come away with what, what two? two so uh, well done Disco Elysium yep. you are the winners this year I think it's a bit of a shame that Resident Evil 2 didn't really get anything because that's my personal game of the year this year but it wasn't really nominated and uh, there, there was a lot of competition in a lot of areas so I guess that's fair enough that's it for our attempt at a concise roundup of the important things that happened at the Game Awards make sure you go off and look at anything look up anything individually yourself because there's plenty we missed and there's even the full length four hour live stream of the actual event make sure to comment down below what you're most excited by or what snubs you think happened do you think Death Stranding deserved to win more do you think it served to win less make sure to let us know leave a like hit subscribe go on over to patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming to support the content we create I've been Henry he's been Gaz you're the real winner of the Game Awards congratulations Bye for now.